right so in the last class we had discussed about the basics on ac system in which the majority thing is in the ac waveform the sinusoidal waveform is one of the important type of ac waveform which is in general form as like this v of t is equal to vm cos omega t plus theta this may be plus or minus or we may also see that vm sin omega t plus or minus theta so it doesn't matter whether it is cosine function or sine function both will be referred as the sinusoidal functions okay and in which so generally the phasor representation of this sine function can be represented by capital case letters on top of it bar and we usually in phasor domain we represent with the rms values of the magnitude and we already seen if v of t is equal to vm cos omega t plus theta what will be its rms value vm by root 2 so here i can write vm by root 2 is the rms value of the given function and how much is the phase phase is angle theta which may be plus or minus so i can represent in this way vm by root 2 at an angle of plus or minus theta and sometimes it depends on the situation that this is the phasor representation phasor representation we can also represent the sine function also in the same way as vm by root 2 at an angle of plus or minus theta so nothing wrong in this but preferably when somebody is asking to convert into phasor form you should choose the base as a cosine function okay so we already seen in the last session that just to compare or just to simplify some additions or some multiplication or some division these kind of algebraic operations you can choose either cosine or sine it's not a matter so just instead of little confusion in the initial stage so let me go with only cosine functions as like this if somewhere i see sine function sine function also can be represented vm by root two at an angle of theta form so uh, depends on situation i will try to show the difference okay so now let us move on that in the last session we seen particularly resistive element that is resistance or is excited with some sinusoidal supply if this is the resistance r and if voltage across this is v bar and current through this element is i bar and we see an important conclusion out of this is that if voltage is at an angle of zero the current is also at an angle of zero this red color one is the current and blue color one is what the voltage try to observe that both are existing at zero degree position for a resistor this what we call as voltage is voltage and current are in phase v and i are in phase or in phase there is no phase difference between voltage and current both are in phase similarly we had seen one more element which is inductor inductor of inductance l and if a inductor of l is subjected or excited with certain ac wave from whose phasor value is v bar and let us assume whose current is i bar and we can see from the last session that the conclusion point out of this inductor corresponding idea is that if voltage is at zero this you should carefully observe i might be taken little bit differently in the last session 
if voltage is at an angle of 0 degree the current will be lagging the voltage by an angle 90 degree this is what the current how much is the angle between voltage and current is 90 degrees the same thing can also be represented another way that what we had seen in the last session if i will rotate this entire diagram by 90 degrees in counterclockwise direction what kind of waveform do i get voltage will be lying over here whereas current will be lagging its corresponding voltage by 90 degrees again this is 90 degrees so both are correct it depends on where you are choosing the voltage anyhow the current should be behind that is lagging the voltage all the times in case of inductor you can compare that angle of the voltage minus angle of the current in the last session for a inductor how much you will get is that initially if this is the waveform which we seen in the last session the angle will be voltage is at an angle of 90 degrees current is at an angle of 0 degree this is 0 degree position so 90 minus 0 how much is the difference 90 degrees here also you can consider same thing see if voltage angle is 0 angle of voltage minus angle of current see that how much is the voltage angle 0 position what will be the current angle if it is in clockwise direction angles are referred as negative angles so this is minus 90 so minus of minus is what plus 90 degrees so in this way it doesn't matter where the voltage whether it is at 0 degree position or at 90 degree position so the current should be falling behind the voltage by 90 degrees this is for the inductor so let me take one more uh, topic today that so capacitor right so let us take the capacitor part today which is also very important capacitor and capacitor of capacitance c and just as like in the last session let me take a capacitor of capacitance c and let me assume a voltage of v is applied v of t I'm taking wherever I take small case letter and as a function of time it represents instantaneous value and the current through this let us assume I of t now it's your wish that you can either assume voltage and determine current or assume current and determine voltage it's your wish so but one can do in many ways these things so let us say that we know for a capacitor this kind of relationship I is equal to C into dV by dt I is equal to C into dV by dt this is what the voltage current relationship for a capacitor so with this equation so just if I will assume voltage just if I will take differentiation and multiply with C I will get the current so in that point of view I am taking voltage V of t is equal to Vm cos you can even consider sign also nothing wrong in it so Vm cos omega t Vm cos omega t and preferably wherever you see it try to make that into the phasor equivalent as V bar is equal to Vm by root 2 tell me at an angle of 0 ok magnitude of the sinusoidal function and phase of the sinusoidal function what is the magnitude RMS value magnitude so which is Vm by root 2 angle is 0 right so now let us see how can we get the current so as because we already assumed the voltage now I is equal to C into D by DT of Vm cos omega t what is the cost differentiation 
Vm minus p. So let me write d by dt will give us additionally this omega. So omega c into minus sine omega t. Am I correct? Yes, so Vm yes, is this one and one omega will come as because it is with respect to dt not omega t. So omega is there. Next is what can we do additionally is this just as I told you in the last session. So I want to make comparison of this voltage and current thereby these must be either in sine form or cosine form. So let us try to express these things into so the cosine form, cos form. So let me write this as Vm omega c as the magnitude. But negative, let me write negative minus sine omega t. Now the question is that I want to make sudden comparison for this voltage with this current. So both must be same sinusoidal function, first condition. Both amplitudes must be positive. Here amplitude is negative, try to also. And moreover, this is a sign. So you can do that. Let us convert this minus sign into cos form. So for which, just quickly go through this coordinate system in this way. Sign, cos, minus sign, minus cos. Now what is the desire? Desire is cos. And from where? From minus sign. So let us see. So uh, what can we do? So in order to get the cos equivalent. If I add for cos. Plus 90 degrees. Cos of omega t plus 90. Is what minus sign? Omega t. So this minus sign omega t can be replaced as. Vm omega c cos of omega t plus 90 degrees. Cos of omega t plus 90 degrees. You can even go with so general trigonometric principle that all t cups that sign uh, cos of omega t plus 90 or 90 plus theta form. So if it is 90 this becomes sign. And if it is second coordinate, then it becomes negative. Like that also you can go. It's your wish. Okay. Right. So, <clears throat> now just try to put these things into some phasor form, which gives some interesting things. So, I'll say this as I bar. And I'll say here magnitude is Vm omega c by root 2, which is the RMS value. Whatever will be there here, that divided by root 2 will give the RMS value. Remember that. Okay. Always, whatever the coefficient of the sine or cosine, that divided by root 2 will give the RMS value for a sinusoidal function at an angle of 90 degrees. Now, you can make this interestingly as like this. So, Vm by root 2 is one thing into or, or let us say uh, into omega c into omega c at an angle of 90 degrees at an angle of 90 degrees so just i want to show here so every time i i mean dilemma that whether you know or not something like this one at an angle of 90 degrees can be written as 1 cos 90 plus j 1 sin 90. Okay. So, cos 90 is 0. So, zero, sin 90 is 1. 1. So, how much I got? 1 at an angle 90 is equal to j. Remember this thing. This I will not repeat every time. 1 at an angle 90 is equivalent to j. Okay. So, next thing is that just let me tell you one more point also. 
if we are multiplying two phasors as like this r1 at an angle of theta1 into r2 at an angle of theta2 is equal to product of the magnitudes r1 into r2 sum of the angles that is theta1 plus theta2 if something is negative is there you will take negative this is what the complex numbers multiplication which you will see in mathematics let me show one more thing also r at an angle of theta1 divided by r2 at an angle of theta2 we will see this kind of situations also several times that's why i am writing these principles r1 divided by r2 that is magnitudes division and the numerator angle minus the denominator angle that when denominator angle comes to numerator it becomes negative so remember these three important points so which we come across many times in dealing these complex numbers okay all right so now let us see here that vm by root 2 just simple vm by root 2 can also be written as vm by root 2 at an angle 0 nothing wrong in that just as like so 1 is equal to 1 at an angle 0 okay so now this i am writing vm by root 2 at an angle 0 into omega c into j or i will write this in more generalized form j omega c what all these things current now try to observe what is vm by root 2 at an angle 0 here as i told you initially itself here while i am writing this i of t i need the comparison between voltage and current i want to see how much is the phase difference etc that's why i am trying to write this current also again cosine function thereby it has come as a function of voltage now can i write this as v bar see i bar is equal to v bar into j omega c and what we know is that from ohm's law can i write as something like this i is equal to voltage divided by resistance this kind of principle we know in dc system now here voltage is there i want to make this in a reorganized form as 1 by j omega c does it gives the same expression of as like in the above see that v divided by 1 by j omega c which gives into j omega c now is it look like try to observe that i is equal to v by r form but as because it is ac system instead of calling as a resistance we call this as impedance so let me call divided by zc who offered this impedance is capacitor so how much is zc here 1 by j omega c and remember that 1 by j is also written as 1 by j into j divided by j which is equal to j divided by j square which is equal to minus j j square is minus 1 so minus j so this 1 by j i can write as minus j minus j by omega c and most of the times we usually take this 1 by omega c as xc where xc is equal to 1 by omega c which we call this as capacitive capacitive reactants capacitive reactants what are the units of all these things this look like as the resistor property of the resistor what is the resistor units 
ohms. ohms. So capacitive ohms. reactance units also in ohms. Even impedance also in ohms. So now hereafter, whenever we see capacitor as like this. Instead of writing as a C, I'll write capacitive impedance which is equal to minus J X C or minus J by omega C. All these terminologies are very important. What is X C means? Capacitive reactance. X, wherever you see X symbol that represents reactance. If suffix is C, capacitive reactance. If suffix is L, it is inductive reactance. If this is the capacitive impedance, if voltage across the capacitor is V and if current through the capacitor is I, then we can simply write V is equal to I into Z. Just like V is equal to IR form. Now R is occupied by the Z. Remember that in AC system, the resistance is equivalent to the impedance. Instead of writing resistance, we try to write down everything in phasor form and the resistance equivalent values are impedances. Okay. Right. So, we got the important parameter which is the capacitive impedance and capacitive reactance. Okay. Now, let us see that furthermore. The phasor diagram for which just let me put these things together. How much is our voltage? V is equal to Vm by root 2 at an angle 0. How much current I got? I. How much is that current? Just can I say the current here somewhere? Yeah. So here this expression. From this expression, I want to write phasor form there itself. So, Vm, uh, right, let me write in this way. So, prior to that, let me bring the current also into phasor form as like this. So, their expression is Vm omega c. So, cos omega t plus 90 degrees. Am I correct? Yes. So, Vm omega c cos omega t plus 90 degree. This can I write now by knowing this knowledge that Vm divided by 1 by omega c into cos omega t plus 90. What is 1 by omega c? Now tell me. What is 1 by omega c? Xc. So now can I write this as Vm by Xc cos omega t plus 19. Now try to observe that I of t is equal to with this format I can even equalize this expression into this form. I m that is coefficient of cosine value is I m which is some maximum value cos of omega t plus 90. What is the maximum value of the current? I m is equal to maximum value of the voltage divided by reactance, capacitive reactance, V m by X c. Remember that these are peak values, maximum values. Now, if I will express this current into phasor form, now tell me how much I will get. I am by root 2 as the magnitude, angle as 90 degrees. Now, have these two equations in mind and let us draw the phasor diagram for these two on some alpha beta axis. So, for which just let me consider this is alpha axis whose position is 0 degree corresponding to 0 degree and this beta axis is corresponding to 90 degrees. 
Now first let us see voltage. How much is the voltage magnitude? Vm by root 2. What is the angle of the voltage? 0. So where shall we place that corresponding vector? So it must be starting at the 0 origin and it is moving towards this with a length of Vm by root 2. Length of this is Vm by root 2. But where this arrow is lying, it is lying on the 0 degree position. So now it represents the voltage whose magnitude is Vm by root 2. Angle is 0. Clear? Next, let us draw the current, second equation. How much is the magnitude? Im by root 2. What is its corresponding angle? 90 degrees. Where is the 90 degrees? Plus 90. From 0, you move in anti-clockwise direction by 90 degrees, you will reach the beta axis. So, on the beta axis, you take a length of Im by root 2. This is length of Im by root 2. Now, this what it represents, voltage and current phasors. This is the current phasor and whereas this is the voltage phasor. Now try to observe what is the angle difference between voltage and current. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. But very interesting and comparative analysis is that, let me take in this day, angle of voltage minus angle of current as like inductor case. How much is the angle of the voltage? Where voltage is lying? On the 0 degree position. Minus where current is lying? 90. 90. So it is already plus 90. So I am taking plus 90. So 0 minus 90 is what? Minus 90. See that now angle difference between voltage and current for a capacitor is 90 but negative. Whereas for the inductor, Whereas for the inductor, somewhere I have to see, plus 90. And try to observe that. Now let me, now this is the time to give you some kind of uh, comparative analysis as like this. For example, for example, if we are sitting on the reference, means 0 degree, this is what the reference. And remember that the anti-clockwise direction angles are positive angles, always positive angles. And whatever comes in that direction, whatever you see, see just to try to understand this in a better way that right? you are sitting on the alpha axis. Whatever you see towards the positive angle those all guys are far away from you in the sense that they are leading you. They are leading you. Means you are at 0 but somebody is already travelled by 90 degrees. So that guy, that guy is definitely leading you by 90 degrees. Remember here after that, if I am sitting at the 0 degree position, Whatever things I could see in the positive angles direction, somebody may be at 90 degrees, somebody may be at 45 degrees, somebody may be at 180 degrees like that. All those guys are leading me by those respective angles. So positive angle direction I will call hereafter as leading side, leading side leading side. Whatever comes in that side, all those are leading this guy. Is this clear? Okay. Next, if somebody is falling behind him, behind this person, as like this for example. Here, let us say some vector or phasor is there. Some x. Now, in order to get this x guy, then just I can simply travel from this person 
in clockwise direction by some angle let us say theta 1. Now try to see that whatever things you move in the negative angle direction that is what clockwise direction angles are referred as negative angles. These we come across several times so try to remember these things. Anti-clockwise angles whatever we see from the alpha axis all those are positive. If I will travel in anti-clockwise direction whatever comes those angles we call as a positive angle which can also be referred as leading side whereas clockwise side angles are referred as negative angles so which will be referred as lagging side. So now you can understand that if you are here at the blue color position this is what you and you have one friend here F1 who might be a capacitor current whose, who, whose nature might be capacitor current nature. Now that guy that is capacitor, capacitor current is leading you. If you are the voltage of that capacitor, so try to let me write this statement here. So just in general way that I, what is I here? Let me write capacitor current. Capacitor current. Current is, is leading, leading whom? Capacitor voltage. What is that? V bar. By how much? By 90 degrees. So, this leading itself will try to represent the nature in which direction it is. Clear? And here, like many people will get confused that here, I said positive angle side is what the leading side. But when I try to calculate the angle difference between voltage and current, I am getting negative angle. So, these all things you should observe very carefully. Okay. Don't get confused with this negative angle with the negative angle direction. Clear? Negative angle directions are referred as lead lagging directions. Positive angle directions are referred as leading direction. But it doesn't mean that here I will get angle between voltage and current as positive for the capacitor. For capacitor, we will get negative. Okay? Right. So, now, let me just, uh, 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 let me take up the inductor analysis also once again, then we will go back. See that, here, if I will assume that this is what the uh, reference position, reference position, which is 0 degree, you assume that you are sitting on the reference position. Then if some guy is falling behind you in the negative angle direction, what is negative angle direction? Here if I will show some arrow that is what the direction. If I will travel in this direction by 90 degrees, I am coming across some person. That person is what? The current. Whose current? Inductor current. Now can I say? This guy is lagging me. This is what you, this is what your friend, F1. So, this current is lagging you by an angle of 90 degrees. Is this clear? So, negative angle, that is clockwise side, all angles are referred as lagging angles. Then, how can I say this also C? So, here I shown in little different way, but we want to say that whether current is lagging or not, just check it. So, now if this is the 0 degree position, it does not matter whether it is 0 degree position or whatever it may be. If I will take the voltage as position of the reference, like if I am sitting over here, 
then from there from there am i moving in clockwise or counter clockwise these things you need to look if it is counter clockwise that corresponding thing will be leading if it is clockwise that corresponding thing will be lagging so if i will travel backward which is lagging side i am getting current by 90 degrees so this current is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees so it doesn't matter whatever may be the phasor diagram either this form or this form both are correct so you should be in a position to compare which one is leading which one is lagging is this clear okay so now just to have the better understanding on these terminology so let me take one problem <clears throat> 